record this. So in a base five numeration system, you group by five and you have a certain number of digits, which is always gonna be five or less. Base 10 number system has, ours has 10, but it could have less. The Mayans remember have a base 20 number system and they only had three digits, but they could have had 20. They just chose not to. So just a reminder about thinking in base five. Uh, I need to remember to make groups of five, to group by five, instead of groups of 10. If we had grown up with this number system, it would be no big deal. It would be second nature. And digits are another important thing. In this version of the base five number system, our set of digits are going to be zero, one, two, three, and four. And so four being the last digit behaves a lot like nine does in, in our base 10 number system. Um, and then the other thing to probably think about here is the idea of place values. And they are all powers of five. So you have your five to the zeros, you have your five to the first power, you have your five to the second power, you have your five to the third power and so on. So our ones, our fives, our 25s, our 125s, whereas in base 10, we call them ones and tens and hundreds and thousands. So in a base five number system, when I write down a numeral, like the one I have here, and this numeral is made up of one, two, three digits, I need to need, know what each of those places mean. So starting on the right here, I'm gonna write this in reverse order from right to left, I have two ones right there. And next to it on the left here, I have two fives because each place value groups again by five. So that would be two fives. And then reaching over to the third place over here where that three is, I have three of something. So when we group five ones, we get fives. When we group five fives, we get 25s. So that would be three. 25s. And I drew a picture of it down here. So here are my two ones right there. And here are my two fives right there. And these are my three 25s right there. Okay. Uh, so if I regroup this by in base 10, which is what I'm doing here, I'm expanding into base 10 notation. And you'll notice that now I'm using that digit five that does not exist in the base five world, right? In the base five numeration system, there is no single symbol for five. That only exists like that in, in number systems that, that are grouping by more than five. Well, in our base 10 number system, if I have three 25s, I would say that would be 75, right? 25 and 25 and 25. And I have two fives, and five and five is 10. And then I have two ones, so 75, 85, 86, 87. So altogether, I have 87 if I group by 10 instead. So bottom line is, is I have, in, in our language, 87 individual items. But I could regroup them instead of saying I have eight tens and seven ones. I can instead say I have three 25s, two fives, and two ones. It's just a different way of accounting for this many. And whether we call that three, two, two, base five, or eight, seven, base 10, it's the same amount of stuff. So these are two different numerals for keeping track of that many things. Anybody have a question on that grouping and regrouping idea? Feel free to speak or chat. Okay, so either you got it or you're napping. How about a thumbs up from someone? 
Thumbs up. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Amy. Oh, by the way, Monty, did you guys see my Arctic box here? Oh, yeah. My building was, the heat was off for the last few days. So I got in here, it's been freezing all day. I had to jump around and keep warm. Okay, sorry. Back to share my screen. All right, we're gonna try and reverse this idea now. So I basically, if somebody gives me a number, a numeral in another base besides base 10, all I have to do is expand it to change it into base 10. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether it's base five, base four, base eight, base 12, Mayan, um, what else, Babylonian. As long as I know what their digits mean and I know what their place values are, I can expand it, turn it to base 10. So changing some other num numeration systems numeral into base 10 is pretty easy. The one the other way is a little bit more work. So let's try that. Zoom tools out of my way, new page. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with, let's say a number we're familiar with, like 87 in base 10. And I want to rewrite that into a base five numeral. Uh, in order to do that, I have to remember that I just have to regroup by five is what I'm trying to do. So regroup by five. So if I'm gonna group by five, thinking about place values, I'll do this a couple of different way, ways. Uh, I'm gonna have my ones. I'm gonna figure out how many ones there are. I'm gonna have to figure out how many fives there are. The next place would be the 25s. And remember the place values in any number system are typically powers of the base. So you have your five to the one power is that place. This is your five to the zero because some non-zero number to the power zero is one. This is my five squares. The next place, if I need it, would be the five cubes. And five to the third power is 25 times five, which is 125. So that'd be my next place if I need it. And I'm, I'm thinking 125, that, that's a bit more than I need. So I really didn't need that place. I usually go one place more just to make sure I don't need it. And I don't. So that means I need 25s. And the way to think about it in terms of place value, it's like um, counting back change if you're ever a clerk at a store. When you count back change, you start with the biggest bills. And then you work your way down as necessary. In this case, our biggest bills are our biggest places. And so the biggest place I need are the 25s. So I ask myself, how many 25s are in 87? Well, that's asking the question, how many times does 25 go into 87? Well, once, twice is 25, three times is 75, four times is 100. So I'm like, eh, it looks like three times. Three times 25, 75, subtract. Let's see, on a good day, we borrow. On a bad day, we wouldn't. So borrowing there, like I said, I didn't need to borrow, did I? Coffee. Seven minus five is two, eight minus seven is one. I get 12 left over. 12 is smaller than 25, which means I probably divided correctly. Uh, so right away, I find that there's three of that third place there, and there's 12 remaining. Uh, so then I asked myself, okay, what about the remaining stuff? So that would be how many fives are in 12? Okay, so that's the same thing as saying, okay, how many times does five go into 12? It goes in twice. Three times five is ten. Subtract, and there's two left over. And I'm I'm out of places now, so those must be my ones there. So I found there's two fives with two left over. So these were the number of fives in twelve. There are two fives in twelve with two left over. So these 
these are my fives there and my ones. So again, counting back change, we start with the biggest bill, which we have is 25, like quarters, 87 cents. How many quarters? Three quarters, two nickels, and two dimes makes 87 cents. So we just regroup by fives instead of by 10. So we're going to try this again on another one, and then we'll look at a different method for doing it. So I'm going to give you a new number. How about... Um, One hundred and sixteen. So here's a base ten number. What I would like you to do is change this into a base five numeral. So think about what I did on the previous example and give it your best shot. See what you come up with and we'll compare notes. All right, anybody think they have an answer? Oh, we got something in the chat. Let's check it out. Chat says 431, 431. Got a couple 431s. <clears throat> All right, so I did some divisions. And so, again, the first thing I ask myself is how many 25s? So that's step one there. So I said 25 goes into 116 four times with a remainder of 16. So it looks like my uh, leading digit there is a four. And then I have to figure out what to do with the 16s and I need to regroup by five. Five goes into 16 three times with one left over. So my next digit should be a three. There seem to be three fives in that leftover 16. And then that leaves one thing left over. So it looks like this would be four, three, one, base five. Do not, I talked about this last week, do not read that as 431. That is not 400, that's 425s. It's not three tens, that's three fives. So we just say 431 base five when you read that. Sorry about that. So that's how we would read that right there. Now let's check to make sure we're right. It could be we have this mass delusion going on. So we're going to expand this to check it. Oops, wrong color. Come on, pen. There you go. To check, expand. So uh, the, up there, that says I have four 25s. So now I'm into the base 10 world because I put the digit five there. And I have three fives, and I have one one. So four twenty fives is one hundred, plus three fives is fifteen, plus one. And yeah, that looks like one hundred sixteen to me. So we did it correctly. Important things. This is all based on the idea of grouping by five. This takes some getting used to, right? We're switching our brains to group by 10, which we've been doing for a long time, okay, to grouping by something else, in this case, five. 
So if this didn't make sense first couple tries, let me know and we'll reinvestigate it. So we're gonna do some more examples. So if you're still struggling, that's appropriate. Um, I'm just gonna dig more into this idea of grouping by five. Anytime they I ask the question, how many groups of this are in that, is basically division. Division is the idea of grouping stuff, okay, systematically. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repeat kind of this conversion here, just using division. Now you might say, well, isn't that what you did right there? It's like, yes, I did, but I'm gonna do it kind of backwards. So check this out. This is gonna look a little weird. I'm also gonna to, to use a method called short division. So I guess I better show short division. Um, so let's do that over here with say the, uh, let's see what's a good example for short division. Um, I know. Let's take five into 116. And at first I'm gonna do what's called long division which I just did, but let's just remind ourselves, long division is where we take uh, one number into another and we kind of look one place at a time. So we say, does five go into this first one? Mm, that's not enough yet, no. Does five go into the first two ones, which is an 11? So I focus on those guys and I say, oh yeah, five can go into 11. All right, so five would go into 11, how many times? Twice, and I line up that place there with the last digit I checked with. Uh, two times five is 10, again, lining up with that place. And then I subtract 11 minus 10 is one, and then I bring down the six. All right, so this process is called long division. And then I ask myself again, okay, does five go into one and a six, which means 16? And I think, 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 I, yeah, I think that goes in three times. Three times five is 15, subtract, I get a one. Uh, when we do get those remainders here and here, the remainder always has to be smaller than the divisor, otherwise you didn't take enough out when you did your regrouping, okay? So this says, how many groups of five are in 116? We found there are 23 groups of five with one left over. So I'm just gonna put that in words. So long division is the process for coming up with this statement. How many groups? of five are in 116, and we found the answer, there are 23 groups of five with one left over. So short division looks pretty similar, except it's not long that way. It's very short vertically. So here goes short division. Short division freaks out, then calculator is a great alternative. Back to short division in about a month. No, three weeks. So short division starts off the same. I say, okay, let's take five into 116 and I keep go in the same way. I say, okay, five goes into one. Nope. Five goes into 11. Yes. Five goes into 11 twice. Now here's the deviation. I don't write any of this down. That two times five is 10 and then subtract. I think it instead. So I think two times five is 10. 11 minus 10 is one. And I put that remainder right here, superscripted uh, to, the, to the upper right of the last digit I checked with. Right, so I took five into 11, it went in twice with one left over. And so there's the one left over. Now that one left over is my 16 that I had over here. I'm just writing it a little different, right? Why, why rewrite the six if it's already there? So this is the way short division works. And then I say, okay, does five go into 16? The answer is yes, five goes in three times. And then I'm just gonna put the remainder one like that. So the difference between short division and long division is we do the multiplication and, do, and subtraction in our head and only write the remainder down and the quotient, which is the whole number part. All right, with that in mind, I'm gonna use short division or division on a calculator, it can go either way, I'll show that too, to convert. So I want to convert 87 base 10 into 
base five. And I'm gonna do that with repeated division. The division means. So I'm gonna scoot down a little because I need a little room to move upward. And I'm gonna take five into 116 like I did before. And I'm gonna use the short division version where I say five goes into 11 twice. Two times five is 10, 11 minus 10 is one. Five goes into 16 three times, but then I'm gonna write the remainder one like before. And then what I do is the 23 now, I look for groups of five again. So I take that 23 there and I ask myself, how many groups of five are in 23? Okay. Uh, five doesn't go into two, but it does go into 23. How many times? Let's see, how about four times? Because four times five is 20. And then there's a remainder of three. And I'm gonna do this one more time. Let's use green. I'm gonna take five into this four. Five goes into four, zero times. Remainder, anybody? Five goes into four, zero times, remainder, four. Thank you, Amanda. Yeah, and here's the cool thing. My answer is right there, four, three, one. as I read down. Okay, and I'm gonna explain why this works. So the first time, this first step right here in red, I'm looking for groups of five. And we'll try this on another example. Okay. And I found a whole bunch, I found 25 of them, right? Those 23 are groups of five. In those groups of five, I'm looking for more groups of five. If you have a bunch of groups of five and you're trying to repackage those as five, five groups of five gives you 25. So this next stage, when I look for groups of five again, means I'm looking for five groups of five or I'm counting up 25s. And I found that there were four 25s there. Anything left over are, are your fives. Anything left over here are your ones. Okay, so at first I found there were 23 groups of five, with one left over, there's my ones. These 23 are fives, and there are four groups of five in there with three left over, three what? Three fives, because those are 23 fives there. So we're just nesting the division uh, on top of each other, and out pops the answer, because this remainder is our ones, the next remainder is our fives, and finally we get our 25s. The key on when to stop is if you get a zero at the top. So we stop when we get a quotient. Quotient is the number on the top of the division box. Zero. And the remainders, top to bottom, represent your numeral in that new base. So let's do another one of these. And we'll do it both ways. We'll do it the counting change method and we'll do it the repeated division method. And so if that wasn't clear, we'll, we'll try it again. All right, so let's take 264 base 10 and we're gonna rewrite that in base five. And so the first method is where you think about place values. So we'll break the screen in half for two methods. So this one is the counting change method. And this method is the repeated division method. So look back at those other two examples. Hopefully you took notes on them. And I would like you to try each method. If they don't match, don't sweat it. I'll go through them again with you to sort it out. Go for it.
So if you hadn't made much progress on the first method, I need to list out the place values till I get to a place value that's bigger than what I started. That tells me the largest place value I need. So then I ask myself, how many times does 125 go into 264? Calculator trick for that. If you don't want to do that by hand, and I don't blame you if you don't. I actually type it into my calculator. So I say, okay, what's six, or sorry, 264 divided by 125? And it's gonna say, hey, it goes in two times, and then I get this crazy remainder there. So I can use my calculator to help continue this. So I know at this point now it goes in twice, I just need to know what the remainder is to continue. And to do that, what I do is I just subtract off that whole number two, because I, I, I got that. I just need to know what that decimal means, and I multiply back in what I divided by, 25. That tells me the remainder is 14. I'll show that again in case that was perplexing. Okay. So I found that in 264, there are two groups of 125 with 14 left over. Two groups of 125 is 250. 264 minus 250 is 14. And again, the way I did that on the calculator shorthand was to say, what is 264 divided by 125? This two out front here is called the quotient. I need to know what the whole number remainder is to go with that decimal. Well, to get that decimal, I, I divided by 125. So I need to multiply the 125 back in, but without that two there, because I only want to know what the remainder is. So I remove the whole number part, the quotient, multiply the 125 back in, that tells me what fraction of 125 I missed, and that's the 14 ones. Some calculators have a button for that, some don't, mine does not. And then I just keep going on this right here. So the next place is my 25s. So let's see, 25 goes into 14 how many times? Zero, with the remainder of 14. And then I just keep going. Next place value is my fives. Five goes into 14 how many times? Twice, with the remainder of four, and now I'm done. It looks like I need two 125s, no 25s, two fives, and four ones. So we start with the largest bill, see if we need any of the next largest bill, and we just work our way down, and finally whatever's left has to be our ones. So we're going to try that with the repeated division next. So repeated division, I need room above. So I'm going to scoot down a little bit and I'm going to write, let's take five into the original number 264. And you could either use short division on this to challenge your brain or you could just plug it into a calculator. You pick. So I'm going to use short division here. So five goes into 26 five times, with one left over. Five goes into 14 three times with one left over. So I get five goes into 264, 53 times, remainder one. You can check that on a calculator using the same trick I just showed. What is 264 divided by five? So I found it's 52 whole number times, right, which is what I had back, ooh, 53, where did I screw up? Oh, right, it only goes in twice, not three times. I think I checked on a calculator. Don't forget, when I make a mistake, please chime in. You guys are awfully quiet today. So that, whoa, what happened? Come on, Pen, there you go. So that should be 52, remainder four. Remainder one, that was bizarre, Gary. All right, so and now I got the 52, I gotta figure out what that 0.8 means. So to do that, we get the 52 away, the whole number part, and multiply back by what we divided out, the five. And so there's the full remainder. And then we just keep going, we divide by five again. So five, goes into 52 how many times? Let's see, five goes into five once with nothing left over. 
5 goes into 2 zero times, remains are 2. So 5 goes into 52 10 times with 2 left over. And we keep going. 5 goes into 10. 5 goes into 10 twice with a remainder of 0. Keep going. I got to get the 0 as the quotient. 5 goes into 2. 0 times remainder 2. And there's my answer right there. Once I get that 0 quotient, that says done. So I get 2024. Remember, we don't leave that as 2,000. It's 2024. Two one twenty fives, no twenty fives, two fives and four ones is what we get. So I did this two different ways. I get the same result each time. Uh, sometimes you might make a mistake in one way or the other. The real way to check is by expanding this. So I got the answer up there. I'm going to check by expanding. So uh, you have to know the place values to make that happen. So the, the biggest place value is 125. So I have two 125s and I have zero 25s. You could just feel free to skip that if you see a zero. I have two fives and I have four ones. Two times 125 is 250 plus zero plus 10 plus four is 264, which matches the numeral I started with in base 10. All right, so we're regrouping from one number system into another. There's a couple of ways to do that. Let's pause this recording, make a new one. Let's pause.